Today's video finds me in front of the camera. Normally I like to do my how-to videos kind of behind the scenes. How, walking you through how to use your ATN Excite 2 menu and configuration, getting it ready for the field. But for this video, I'm in front of the camera because I want to show you the proper way to mount your ATN Excite 2 to a standard Picatinny rail. It doesn't really matter if the rail is on a bolt gun like this Remington Model 700 or your favorite AR, that's optics ready. Before we start, I want to just start with a little safety. I want to make sure this action is clear. Normally when I work on a gun, I remove the bolt or the action just to ensure that I prevent all possible uh, risks or having any issues. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clear the, the bolt a couple of times. And we're good. The reason I left the bolt in for this video is I want to make sure that I show you one limitation you need to be aware of when installing your ATN Excite or Excite 2. We really only need a couple of tools for this installation. We need a good quality torque wrench, uh, one that measures inch pounds, not foot pounds. Again, that's inch pounds. Um, this is a, a Wheeler. They make a bunch of, of scope and, and rifle uh, um, gunsmithing equipment that's relatively inexpensive. This Wheeler came in a kit, uh, had some other great tools with it. Uh, the Wheeler kit comes with a half inch socket which is the most common socket size when working with scope bases. Uh, but for our Excite 2, we need a 12 millimeter. Um, I point that out because the half inch will fit, uh, but it'll be sloppy on these nuts and it will really risk stripping them or rounding them over over time, making it difficult to remove the sight uh, or uh, put it on another gun in the future. So again, Good, good torque wrench, 50 inch pounds is what we'll be working with today. Easy to see on this torque wrench that I've already got it set there. I'll cover that again and I'll also uh, put it in the comments so you don't have to watch this whole video if you forget what it's supposed to be set at. Talk a little bit about the sight itself. Um, when we talk about things like eye relief on a scope and you're talking traditional glass scopes, you're usually talking about four, four inches, three and a half to four inches of comfortable distance between your eye and the scope, right now about, about that much maybe. Um, when you get too far back, you'll start to see a black halo effect. Uh, it can really not make the sight function very well. Same thing if you get too far forward or you get too high or too low. Really focusing on that whole too much eye relief thing. With an Excite sight 2 or any digital sight like a Thor HD or um, even any other brand, you're really kind of limited to about an inch and a half to two inches. If I look at my Excite, I have this eye cup. This eye cup is almost exactly an inch and a half from the screen to the back of the eye cup. It's perfect sight picture. I can come back a little further, you know, maybe about an inch further and still stay pretty clear. If I get back to that, that four inch mark, um, what I start to see is the edges of my sight picture are blurry. They've got a halo, much like the, the black halo effect with the glass scope. But I've also lost the visibility of the widgets and my crosshairs are hazy on the top and bottom. So mounting it properly on the gun is important to ensure we get that good sight picture. You may find that your rail doesn't come far enough back or that your bolt impedes with the, the sight itself um, so your stock is too long. I'm not going to cover how to fix that in these videos. I'm just going to cover the basic mounting. I will do a video in the next few days that talks about what do I do and what can I do to fix those limitations of, of digital sites. Um, but for this video, again, we're just going to review the mounting. If you're not familiar with the Picatinny style system, most of the mounts that are designed to go on them will have what's called a recoil lug. This recoil lug allows me to give positive position on the rail that one ensures the sight doesn't slip back and forth over use over time. Two, gives me a good positive contact to put the sight back on the same spot. If you remember your Excite 2 or your Thor HD, um, they all offer the ability to save up to, I believe, six profiles in there. So I can set a profile for my, my bolt gun here, get it set up, get it sighted in, save it, move it to my AR, create a new profile and do the same thing. And with the utmost confidence, I can move the site back and forth as long as I remember to change the profile in my site. Uh, I know I get a lot of questions, does that really work? 
The answer is yes. I use it, I've probably done it a dozen times with just this gun. Matter of fact, we were out last week and I think I switched it to three guns or four guns in one hunt because I had some smaller stature kids needing a shorter action and a shorter stock to get a good side picture. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing mounted up. ATN recommends 50 inch pounds of torque when you're mounting your sight to your rail. Uh, again, I'll put that in the notes. Um, I've already got my torque wrench set. If I mount my x sight 2 to the furthest back on this rail, what I'll find is that the bolt is actually going to hit the bottom corner of my mount. It's not so much that it actually impedes the closing of the bolt, but it is enough that over time, I risk damaging the face of my bolt here, or the, the face of the bolt handle, and the back corner of my X sight. So, although this position gives me much better eye relief, it brings the sight back a whole half inch, I'm gonna go ahead and move it for one lug. Once I've got it there, you'll see that the sight will slide on the rail. That's that recoil lug sliding in the Picatinny slot. Again, whenever I mount my sight, I want it fully forward and engaged, ensuring that I have positive contact, a repeatable contact, and a secure scope. I'm gonna go ahead and crank these things down by finger type first. I'm gonna double check my torque wrench. It is set at 50 inch pounds. I'm gonna work my way back and forth. I'm not gonna just crank on the first one until it clicks. I want it kind of evenly apply pressure to make sure that I'm not uh, twerking the rail, twerking the sight base, or bending any components there. So you'll hear that click. That means we're 50 inch pounds. There we go. I'm gonna double check that I can clear. My action is clear. I have no problem getting to my chamber. My safety is functioning. We're good to go. All right, it's ready to take it to the range and sight it in.